In this smartphone show, a review of the HTC S710, aka the Vox, aka the Orange E650, with slide out QWERTY keyboard and great form fact. Also, an iPhone rant, not being critical about the upcoming world's best media player, but appealing for proper context and pointing out 10 things that the iPhone can't do. Everyone loves a good game, and I in particular love those which are realistic enough to claim as simulations. Celeris has finally released a proper S60 3rd edition beta version of their Virtual Pool mobile simulation. Users of older S60 and Windows mobile devices shouldn't worry though, as the same game has been out for your platform for ages. Highly recommended. The BBC reports that the British climber Rod Baber has successfully made a mobile phone call from the top of Mount Everest using a Motorola Z8 smartphone. More publicity on this at Motorola's special Everest mini site. You'll see my review of the HTC S710 later in this show, but already there's news of a replacement. The S730, codenamed Wings, adds 3G connectivity, a proper GPS and a faster processor to the equation, which should help out quite a bit in the battle for market share. And finally, Samsung has announced the world's first 8GB microSD card, a staggering achievement in my eyes. Despite a degree in physics, I still have trouble getting my head around 8 billion bytes of information in that tiny and thin sliver of plastic. This is the HTC S710, also known as the HTC Vox, and now rebranded under numerous operator names, such as the Orange SPV E650. First impressions are awesome. All about Symbian's Rafe Blanford actually used the word lusted about this device, and this from a Symbian-based site webmaster. The S710 is the perfect size, weight and feel for a smartphone. And when the keyboard pops out of the side, any self-respecting smartphone geek like myself should just about keel over with pleasure. Unfortunately, some functions are distinctly average or even downright quirky. A bit of a letdown after all the anticipation. But the basics, it's got Windows Mobile 6 standard, so it's the non-touchscreen version, which suits me fine as it means better screen contrast outdoors and plenty more durability. The 2.4 inch display is gorgeous by the way, whichever way you look at it. And yes, by sliding out the main keyboard, the display switches neatly to landscape, giving you effectively a full communicator. As a phone and messaging device, the S710 is surely the smallest around, and it doesn't do a bad job. The keyboard's nicely constructed with good tactile feedback, and my main complaint is that the layout's rather strange, with the full stop and comma on the top row, for example. Still, nothing you couldn't get used to. Pre-Office 2007 documents can be edited using a cut-down version of Office Mobile, which in turn is a much cut-down version of the PC-based Office. But bizarrely, there's absolutely no way to create a new document. The workaround is to open an existing file and resave, by the way. Working with Office documents is pretty slow on the S710. I'm guessing the processor isn't really up to it. There are the usual Windows Mobile PIM apps, along with a calculator directly inspired by the third-party Calcium, plus HTC's fabulous Task Manager. So far, so good, but if you are planning on using the S710's camera much, then note that although the basic 2 megapixel sensor isn't that bad, though not up to the standards of the, the sensors in most S60 handsets, the current firmware insists on capturing every image in portrait mode. So, for example, you hold the device like this, you press the shutter, you switch over to pictures and videos, and then find that your image has been turned on its side. Select it, and there you go, still on its side. No problem, you think, it's meant to be viewed in landscape mode. So you open the keyboard and it's still on its side. Ah! Very strange, although I'm sure this could be fixed in new firmware if there's enough will from HTC and its licensees. Music playback was distinctly average, but then the S710 is not really optimised for multimedia. There is A2DP support though, which helps you go properly wireless. And talking of wireless, having Wi-Fi on board is extremely welcome given how common wireless networks are these days, and given that there's no 3G data support. Pocket Internet Explorer is good enough, as always, for the mobile web and for simple traditional layouts. Finally, there's micro SD expansion up to 2GB and good build quality. I loved the rubberized finish. The S710 is a pretty sexy miniature communicator, let down mainly by a few software issues. Definitely one to watch though. And I wonder whether we'll see any copycat designs coming from the Symbian world. Hmm.
It's another rant, and not just any old rant, an iPhone rant. Oh, yes. The date for release of Apple's iPhone draws ever closer, and I'll be previewing it in a couple of shows' time. But in the meantime, I thought it would be useful to showcase some of the things it can't do, but which other current smartphones can. In other words, by all means, save up your pennies for the hands-down best portable media player ever created, the iPhone, but do please bear the iPhone in proper context. Many of the things it does, contrary to Jobs' claim that it was, quote, five years ahead of any other device, unquote, have been done on many other smartphones from as early as 2004 on the Symbian, Windows Mobile and even Palm OS platforms. You see, picking up email, browsing the web and using the Java app Google Maps for mobile are most certainly not restricted to the iPhone. I was doing the first two on a mobile device over five years ago. Yes, the iPhone will probably have the slickest media interface yet seen, at least if you're an iTunes user, but here's a rundown of the top ten things that the iPhone can't do. In reverse order. And number 10, listen to the radio. 90% of all S60 third edition smartphones sold in the last year, and that's a lot, we're talking well over 20 million, have a built-in FM radio. Great for catching up with local news without needing data connectivity. At number 9, you can replace the battery. Rechargeable batteries don't last forever, their life gradually decreases. With every device other than the iPhone, you can just buy a new battery from the high street and drop it in. Or even have a spare. Keep it charged and swap it in when you run out of power. Number 8. Record video at genuine TV quality. Remember I shoot the smartphone show on a smartphone and have done for over a year. And the resolution you see now is only a quarter of the frame size and half the frame rate that's actually being recorded. With a smartphone like this, forget blocky amateur footage, you can shoot any priceless family moment anytime, anywhere, and others can enjoy it on DVD later. Number 7. Reply to messages in full. With a QWERTY keyboard built in, common these days with the likes of Trio's Blackberries and the Nokia E-Series, you don't have to artificially abbreviate every message as you would when tapping something out on a screen with your finger. Number 6. Use it outdoors. Many S60 and Windows Mobile smartphones have no touchscreen layer on their displays, meaning that they're both a lot more robust and also far clearer to read in daylight. Number 5. Use a built-in GPS to let your smartphone guide you to a destination. With no extra connections, it'll know where you are at all times. Number 4. Plug your smartphone into any TV and replay your recorded DVD quality videos. Show off your photos at the full TV resolution. Or simply use your smartphone as a very expensive games console. Number 3. Download web pages and podcasts at genuine broadband speeds using 3G data or HSDPA, wherever you are. No need to wait while GPRS data packets crawl through the ether. Number 2. Take semi-professional, high-resolution photos, usually 3 megapixels or greater, with properly focused subjects and even fill-in flash. No more soft-focus, grainy images suitable only for, quote, fun use. Number 1. The biggie. Use hundreds of third-party applications, including satellite navigation, reference software, privacy applications, and, of course, games. S60 slogan, for example, is open to new features, which says it all, really. In fairness to the iPhone, of course, not everything I just mentioned can be done on one single device, although 9 out of the 10 can be done on current hardware. The Nokia N95 and the E90 communicator, for example. No one device is perfect, though. We all know that. Each one has its own specialities. Watch this space for more comparisons and reviews on the Smartphone Show.